Are you ready to pay double up the pump this summer? Because the experts are warning about a huge price spike as fuel inventories continue to shrink, especially as OPEC Plus slashed oil production. And the Saudis are telling U.S. short sellers who are betting prices will fall to watch out. The Energy Information Association expects the price of a barrel of oil to rise almost $10 above the current average, which will have a massive impact on gasoline prices all over the country. In some states, drivers are already paying over $4.90 per gallon, but the shock could be even bigger as seasonal demands pick up, according to Bloomberg. Adding to the worrying outlook, new research has found that U.S. gas pipelines are at risk of outages. Regulators are urging officials to take precautions before a nationwide disruption occurs. That's what we're going to expose in today's video. But before moving on, we kindly ask you to support our work with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The average cost for a gallon of regular gas increased by 21 cents from just one month ago, according to North American analysts. In several states, prices are edging closer to the $5 mark. For instance, right now, California drivers are paying $4.915 per gallon. In Hawaii, gas prices reach $4.78. In Arizona and Washington, Americans are seeing prices at the pump going above $4.50. The head of petroleum analysis at Gas Buddy, Patrick DeHaan, explained that gasoline prices have drifted higher in the last week due to refinery kinks and low gasoline supply. DeHaan expects the national average to reach much higher levels, especially if unexpected refinery outages flare up or we see a major hurricane or economic development, he said. On top of that, he sees gas prices shooting up well above forecast, given that the debt ceiling passed through Congress, which is likely to keep fuel demand stronger this summer. At the same time, after OPEC Plus, which represents 23 oil exporting countries, announced crude oil production cuts for the rest of the year, the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the statistical and analytical agency within the U.S., raised its Brent crude oil price forecast for the second time this year. The agency expects the cost of a barrel of Brent crude to reach $85 in the coming months, and that's almost $10 above current prices. Without a doubt, that will have a dramatic impact on gasoline prices at U.S. stations. When the cost of crude oil crosses the $80 a barrel mark, that puts a lot of upward pressure on what we pay at the pump, highlighted Andrew Gross, AAA spokesperson. However, some industry insiders exposed that the potential for Brent crude to soar above $100 a barrel is real, which makes the outlook a lot scarier. James Davis, the director of short-term global oil service and head of upstream oil at FGE, said during an interview with RigZone, it's now quite likely that Brent will move over to $100 per barrel this year, given the 1.15 million barrels per day of extra voluntary cuts planned by various OPEC Plus members. Last week, oil prices already started to climb on prediction for a tight gasoline market and a warning from the Saudi energy minister that raised the prospect of further OPEC Plus output cuts. Fears of a supply squeeze are spreading across the entire industry after the Saudi officials said he would keep U.S. short sellers, those betting that prices will fall, ouching and told them to watch out. To make things worse, national gasoline inventories dropped for the third straight week to their lowest levels for this time of year since 2014. Furthermore, total U.S. fuel oil production is on track to decrease this month after output fell last week by the largest amount since February 2022, data from the EIA reveals. Gulf Coast and East Coast refiners have led the decline and produced 15% and 9% less fuel oil so far this month, respectively. Though a gallon of gas costs less than a year ago, those averages may not hold for much longer. Analysts say prices can double in the near term and put a crimp in people's budgets. 
Consumers confronted by inflated prices for basic necessities will now have to spread their budgets even more thinly, International Energy Agency, or IEA, said in an oil outlook on Friday. This all goes badly for the economic recovery and for growth. Summer gas produces fewer emissions and is more expensive to produce, whereas cheaper winter gas ignites more easily to start your car in cold temperatures. Warm weather typically draws out more drivers too, significantly increasing the demand for gasoline. Usually when demand is up, gas prices go up, said Anne Leon Finiga, spokesperson for the AAA. Just as it happened before, peak gasoline demand indicates that price sharks are coming for drivers, and that could also make inflation much stickier than policymakers anticipate, Bloomberg notes. When inventories start to dwindle and people notice that prices are rapidly skyrocketing, they tend to hoard fuel before stations run completely dry. That's exactly what happened in 2021 when Americans witnessed huge lines outside gas stations due to supply disruptions and higher costs. This year, one single extreme weather event left seven states without fuel, according to CBS News, including Virginia and North Carolina, which even declared a state of emergency to prevent the crisis from escalating. You don't want to miss out, a woman waiting for gas told CBS. You don't want to be the one who doesn't get gas. More recently, the entire Miami-Fort Lauderdale area faced massive gasoline outages after a historic storm caused flooding and triggered a wave of panic buying by drivers filling their gas tanks. More than half of gas stations in the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area were without gasoline on Wednesday after flooding from last week's massive storm, which caused a wave of panic buying by drivers topping off their gas tanks. I would estimate that 80% of station closings are due to panic buying, said Patrick DeHaan at the time. Data from GasBuddy showed that 59% of stations in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, didn't have any fuel. In Key West, a three and a half to four hours or more drive from Port Everglades, Dion's Quick Chick on Roosevelt Boulevard had no fuel to offer its customers. It's scaling us, Timothy Payton, a Dion's employee, said. When inputting numbers, I've never put in zero. The station faced major delivery delays that took weeks to normalize. We got an email that said deliveries have been released, but we're at the end of the line, as you can see, Dion's employee David Bloom said. I've never experienced anything like this over a rainstorm, driver Mike Farrell stressed. Shortages and closures intensified because of a surge in demand caused by drivers rushing to gas stations that were still open, a scenario that's likely to repeat this summer. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. People see the gas lines and they think they should fill up, added DeHaan. This is true everywhere. People lose their minds when there's one station with a closed pump, said Tom Klotz, a global head of energy analysis for Opus, which tracks gas prices for AAA. There's panic. Nobody wants to give up their mobility. Stations have very shallow inventories of gasoline. Most need a delivery every two or three days, he said. The phenomenon of people rushing to buy gas and causing shortages gains force after the public is aware of potential supply interruptions, just as occurred following the ransomware attack that shut the Colonial Pipeline back in 2021. And just a few weeks ago, researchers at Carnegie Mellon University published a study in the Electricity Journal that found that U.S. gas pipelines are at risk of facing widespread outages. They urged U.S. officials to take action before supplies drop to dangerously low levels. The scientists investigated vulnerabilities at production sites and outage risks at major U.S. stations. In new research, scientists investigated the vulnerability of electric power generation to electric outages at U.S. pipeline compressor stations. They found that at least 10% of such stations were facing serious threats of shortages, thus vulnerable to widespread energy supply outages. Addressing this issue should be a top priority that requires immediate attention, 
Notes, Sean Smiley, a doctoral candidate in engineering and public policy at CMU who led the research, but due in part to the lack of regulatory oversight of the gas transmission system, the potential consequences of failure was not well understood. On the other hand, things have drastically changed in the diesel market, and the shift suggests that a serious economic slowdown is already unfolding. Ed Morse, Citigroup's global head of commodities research, pointed out that oil demand was being crippled by the prospects of an economic slowdown and deep recession. Similarly, U.S. diesel demand has continuously weakened this year, given that freight and industrial activities have slowed amid higher interest rates and falling consumer demand for goods. Refiners are already noticing a drag on diesel demand caused by the sticky inflation, while transportation and logistics firms say a freight recession is already here and hundreds of smaller trucking companies are going bankrupt. To start, we're in a challenging freight environment where there's a deflationary price pressure for an industry that continues to face inflationary cost pressures. Simply stated, we're in a freight recession, J.B. Hahn President Shelley Simpson said on the earnings call last week. In the trucking business, I think a lot of these little ones are going to go out of business, Bob Costello, chief economist at the American Trucking Associations, told the Wall Street Journal in May. Trucking companies with fleets of 200 to 300 vehicles are failing at a rate of about one a week, Costello exposed. The benchmark diesel futures for fuel delivered in the New York Harbor plunged this week to a 15-month low as the fears of a diesel shortage from last autumn have now turned into fears of weak diesel demand due to a collapsing economy. But still, there was a notable drawdown in U.S. distillate inventories, which have slumped in the past weeks and are around 11% below the five-year average for this time of year. Meanwhile, imports into the United States have continued to fall due to the decreased freight activity as financially struggling Americans curb spending. Shipping giant Maersk in March flagged the lowest level of container imports in Los Angeles and Long Beach, the main gateways for U.S. trade with Asia, since March 2020, when the pandemic and lockdown swept America. Container imports to those ports slumped by 38% in February from a year earlier, Mesk reported. Container imports are seen as a precursor of trucking activity for goods that have to be hauled to consumers from the point of import, the company explains. The drastic slowdown in the freight market is proof that we're heading to a crisis much worse than we all thought. In the short term, Americans should expect more unpleasant surprises at the pump and in the longer term, we should all prepare for unprecedented outages and a downturn unlike anything we've ever seen before.